that. Okay, so this is a big one. We're almost to the end of our little series on Taleb and applying his ideas to career learning, education. Interventionism. Have you picked up any vibes about this? I can't believe I just said the word vibes. But have you picked up any of these kind of ideas so far in your reading of it? I'm curious. Interventionism, okay, I have fantastic. no clue. Taleb makes the point that pretty much everything suffers from excessive meddling and tinkering, right? Politics, medicine, education is definitely a good example. So if you go through his ideas, even though he doesn't come to us in the education thinker, which is why I think he's so interesting to talk about for education, like you find they fit nicely actually with great philosophies of actually some of the really known and respected educators. And if you design a school based on his ideas, like there wouldn't be much meddling, right? There wouldn't be formal classrooms. There wouldn't be like rigid times and lesson structures, I don't think, and, and probably not the whole didactic kind of teaching styles that we're used to. And I think it would require us intervening far less in terms of how people are learning and developing. Human institutions regularly make the mistake of meddling too much and intervening too much. Again, this bias of trying to control the outcome trying to really structure people in their way. Like it's a hard impulse to resist. And I think it comes back to his bigger concept that we always are mistaking the reasons behind things to be much more about things we control than like random outcomes. And people are already like the whole lecturing birds how to fly concept. So I think this is interesting. Often teachers and educational theorists are thinking about what more we can do to change and improve education. I think it's the wrong question, all right? And I think Taleb would agree. I think the real question is, what do we need to stop doing? For example, I found this very entertaining video before, before we started recording, where Taleb's criticizing the Gates Foundation, actually, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, because they had this plan to eradicate mosquitoes. And the video is titled, The Gates Foundation is Repeating the Errors of Mao, as in Mao Zedong. Like the, the, the former Chinese ruler. Yeah, big. Jeez. Big. Yeah, mate, That's he's not afraid to fire shots, this guy. And he explains, but he explains how under Mao Zedong, China killed off sparrows so they wouldn't eat farmers' crops, which makes sense. Right? But the unexpected consequences that, if you think about it, the sparrows actually ate the insects too. And the insects ate more of the crops than the sparrows did. So... I believe it actually, he points out, it actually accelerated the massive famine that killed like millions and millions of people in China. And the sparrows, he goes, the sparrows just actually took a little bit, it turns out the sparrows just took a little bit of tax for a significant but unheralded role. So even though they ate some of the crops, they were doing a bigger service by actually having the, the insects. And he says, this is how nature works. Right? But people, on the other hand, meddle with these systems we don't understand because we have this bias towards our own control but nature is complex and nature is actually quite efficient it was one of my big takeaways from the book so you, if we're applying that to education it's like nature the whole lecturing birds how to fly concept with people people actually have remarkability that they are either born with that potential or they develop through the natural process of growing up right if they just grow up in the right environment Right, so many, so many kids are learning stuff on the internet outside of school, for example, and learning to code and stuff like that. It's ridiculous, and it's all self-taught. It's all self-directed. But the the problem with us as people, when we meddle, is we're very bad at understanding second-order effects. In the Joe Weeby kind of terminology, you might even call them thousand-door effects, which is what happens after you do this thing, like the sparrows. They didn't really anticipate the second-order effect of sparrows eat insects. So because people are so bad at that, and we're so bad at that, because nature and systems are so complex, he always, he, always, he always has this default position that we should try to intervene as little as possible as a rule of thumb. And we should always resort to nature unless there's a really, really good reason to intervene. For example, like it's good to have shelter because otherwise if we're living amongst like tigers and stuff, they will try to eat us. So let's intervene. But it's kind of like if you went to a random, like, deserted island, you wouldn't just try to randomly remove a species because you don't know the impact that will have on the overall ecosystem after I tell you that sparrow example, right? So you, 
the default is to just try not to intervene too much. But this is what he says, like, he really critical of academia, really critical of social sciences, economics, politics, because they meddle way too much. And it just has all these flow on effects. And I think the, the problem is with kind of, again, you come back to like the experts and stuff. They have this, they have this natural inclination to get involved and shape things, right? But because, because they can impact people on a larger spectrum, because they're in positions of autonomy and power, like a politician runs a country, right? So they can actually do the most harm. Whereas like an everyday idiot is not sophisticated enough to do something normally that impacts like heaps of people, apart from like Mr. Bean in a movie where he does something wrong and it has this massive flow and effect. The reality is that that's what the... So, I don't know, this is a very powerful idea. Like he even says in... He speculates that, or not speculates, he has a pretty good case for it, but he says that medicine probably killed more harm, was more harmful than positive until they invented penicillin, for example. Because doctors were always like intervening, they did things like bloodletting, they've done all these atrocious things over the years, and like it's still not that great. Even now, our medical system, like human error kills so many people now. Like, How about prescription of... Um, prescription of pain medicine to people with anxiety exactly. and stuff like that. That's the first oh. thing I can think of is meddling with ADHD, someone, someone dyslexia. coming to with a mental health like you've issue. Got all these, he's even critical of those too. He calls a lot of those. like He says depression, ADHD, and other invention, invented conditions. Who really doesn't Jesus. hold back? <laughs> I, you can see what no, he's no, no. There trying is a to point. make and he's sort not, of a point out to, of it. To be honest, I agree if he thinks the way I do, which is that the experiences are real, but the way they've been labelled mm. is, is so counterintuitive because they've been pathologised. And that... Yeah, and that example... Yeah. yeah. So Sorry, he's got great examples. He's even got in the book experiment they run in the Netherlands to do with traffic in a place called Drachten. They removed most of the traffic signs and the result was an increase in road safety. <laughs> Which makes sense. Like you're always watching something when you're driving. You're distracted from actually being a safe driver. Like I understand the value in speed limits, mm. but then if you're looking at all these variables all the time, at some point there's a diminishing return there for the overall goal of safety. Think about how many road signs there are. It's bloody stressful, uh, especially mm. when you're on the freeway. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's yeah. a really good case, and then education is probably like a big one. And he has a couple of stories relevant to it. So he goes, I once ran into Alison Wolf at a party. Parties are great for optionality, in brackets. As I got her to explain to other people her evidence about the lack of effectiveness of funding formal education. All right, so they're talking about she's, she's, this lady has studied it. And it's like, it doesn't really create the outcomes we want in society. It doesn't seem to be. One person got frustrated with our skepticism. Wolf's answer to him was, real education is this, pointing at the room full of people chatting. Like, I just find that so powerful. I think that's a big part of, like, what we do at Constant Student, that you actually get so much learning from an unstructured but deep conversation with people. And people who do go get formal educations, but who manage to have a lot of that, just a lot of exchanging of ideas and conversations with people and go, like, get good mentors, I think those are things that actually move the needle the most. So... You know, it's, it's really powerful because it actually comes from a very natural, unguided process of learning rather than this over-controlled meddling system.